it is for certain a wrong, totally wrong, and we are prepared to have a debate with anybody who, 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 who feels able to come to say, including the Olisaba that is uh, misleading this uh, bunch of, uh, you know, I don't know how to describe uh, these uh, people who are sitting on the sovereignty of the people, sitting in Abu, the, 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 the refuge camp of regional renegades they call Abuja, totally secluded from the people, sharing the blood of the people in the name of our location, in the name of governance, having, you know, standing on the constitution that hijacked the sovereignty of the people. And the people have organized themselves in the process that will see them retrieving their sovereignty either into a new political arrangement, that's a new union they agree completely among themselves, or unilaterally taking their portion and taking a walk. We had a Professor Shoninka talking about it only a few days ago. When the word restructuring is bruited around, we often hear the challenge, hey, what do you mean by restructuring? Well, I don't even like the word restructuring. I use, I prefer the expression, expressions like reconfiguration, decentralization. Everybody can grasp that. Decentralization. And those who lead us, they recognize the necessity of it. They recognize the importance, almost the inevitability of it, until they get in power. Yes, that's the difference. Until they get in power. Deconstruction, reconfiguration, decentralization, all this is necessary in order to maximize development. We speak about uh, food hunger because it is real, but uh, palliatives are temporary stopgap policies. They do not reach to the heart of the problem, which is one of decentralized development as massively as possible. Professor Shrinka did identify, even not being a lawyer, he had been involved in this process sufficiently from the days of uh, Nadeko when he was, doing, uh, when he was uh, operating as uh, Nalekon. Eh? He, he became co-convener in the Pronaco that began to organize the people for how they were going to rework their union. He was a, a you know, co-plaintiff with a, a Nooro and the Ojuku in the suit that went to court to say that the, the 2007 and 2009 that went to court to, uh, you know, uh, 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 to, to establish the, the, the false basis to, 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 to challenge the legitimacy of this, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the fraud you see in my hand. And so he's been involved sufficiently to be able to do what he did at the 50th anniversary event of a punch a newspaper where i'm talking about showing now where he was explaining to the country that nigeria has come to where we have to either dismantle it peacefully so that people don't die or we go to rework it wholesale that reworking he says he, he, he says instead of talking about restructuring that nobody seems to know how to describe that it is a reconfiguration of the union, a, a wholesale reconfiguration of the union, which starts with the dismantling of the bad arrangement that is not working. We have all seen it's not working. How long shall we maintain this pretense? He said reconfiguration. He also identified the fact the, 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 the people who will do who will have the, to do that business of that reconfiguration. It is the constituent components of Nigeria, the Yorubas, Yoruba, bringing their Yoruba land to federate with Ijo as a job that is on Ijo land, and Igbo on Igbo land, and Berom on Berom land. These are the these are the peoples of Nigeria, not any group of uh, 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 people you meet in Osho, the marketplace, or the market, you know. No, it is identify the land, because we're talking about aggregation of uh, lands and peoples into one political union. So that arrangement that brings them together. You cannot come and fence them, you know, from uh, from the uh, uh, from outside like the British did in 1914. They just you just came there without talking to any one of them. You fenced the external uh, the boundaries, and then they called it a name and began to tell them that they are now in marriage amongst themselves. That's how we came here. And now 
It has injured us sufficiently. And we have organized, we who are the victims of that bad arrangement have organized. As a, it was a, the, the, there's no difference between the amalgamation of 1914 and the amalgamation of 1999. They were both done by fiat, with no reference to the, to the people who are going to be federated. And so, unfortunately for the authors of this, uh, this fraud, they put our signature as the authorization for this uh, abomination. And that is what we are pulling back. And as Professor Shoninka did point out in his uh, lecture at Punch event, that there's this, uh, you know, like demonic fear of, uh, you know, paralyzing paranoia, paralyzing fear that uh, this uh, Nigeria will break up. It is in refusing to go to discuss the union and the terms of the union that you are now providing a guarantee that the union will break up. What we are doing, what Ninas is doing, is the last opportunity those who want to have a union will have to get to that. Otherwise, right now, we have no union. The instrument that, come, that brought the union, that is, up, that is keeping the union right now, has been defeated. He's dead. The National Assembly has acknowledged it by going to search for a new <laughs> constitution, which they have no power to make. And so, let us be clear-minded that uh, the only thing that can happen, like we saw in the case of Yugoslavia, they refused to discuss. It went up in smoke. Today we have uh, this, uh, you know, uh, Croatia and the other countries that came out from it, Macedonia, six countries. But we saw the festival of blood that pre uh, preceded, uh, because they refused to discuss. But we look also at uh, the old Soviet Union. It came to where they just went back to their natural fault lines. And we have 16 countries or so, 15. We don't know what will happen to <laughs> Crimea <laughs> eventually. You know. So it is uh, in that sense that uh, we once more invite everybody to take this opportunity of coming down to come down from our high horses, all of those who think they can keep Nigeria by brigandage. We come down from our high horses, get into a transition as quickly as we can, and go discuss those two questions. If we don't, by that act of refusing to, we're only saying farewell to the failed Lugadian experiment of 1914. So we come back to telling the National Assembly that no alphabet, no alphabet will be taken from this 1999 constitution. And if anybody would then say, oh, we are going to amend it, like we saw, I don't know who on behalf of the Bar Association of Nigeria, before Lisa Bokaba uh, came to preach uh, his uh, nonsense to them, you know, the Bar Association had uh, issued a notice inviting all the lawyers in Nigeria to please come with memorandum for uh, how a uh, National Assembly will do amendment of everything that needs to be amended in the country. The issue, the issue, the contention of Ninas, in case anybody had been deaf or dumb all this while, the contention of Ninas is simple. We have not made any constitution, full stop. We neither met we did uh, no, agree, no, no uh, right any. We, we just did not do what uh, was alleged to have been done, which was now basis of which, which became basis of the instrument that has now hijacked our lives with a 68 item exclusive list, like, like, like 68 chains. When you hear exclusive list, it is like uh, tying somebody up or a group of people with 68 different ropes, chains. That I don't have electricity is because there's one item on that list that says only the federal government can generate and transmit to me. So they shut down my Oji River in Enugu and uh, plunge me into darkness in Aba and on nature and in Newe and everywhere in between. You can't do your highway. You can't do your port. You can't do your security. Your, your, your security. They take the asset by, by that exclusive list. They take the, the asset, economic asset. They take the power to work that asset. So the job and their oil and gas. Nigeria takes the oil and gas with that exclusive list. Nigeria takes the right to refine with that exclusive list. So they are selling, they are refining. 
if you take any quantity, you become a criminal. Because Nigeria, there's only one criminal in the arena. The Nigerian state that is coming to take without talking to the owners. What is the, what is the definition of robbery or stealing? It's when you come to take without you know, uh, the consent of the owner. If Nigeria were to cease to exist today, who will be the owner of this body of waters? Who will be the owner of each of these lands? The Yoruba know the, the beginning and the end of their land. It's not disputed, and that is the basis of sovereignty. That's the basis of self-determination. That they are in their land unchallenged by any other group. They've not been conquered or dislodged. As it is with Yoruba, so it is with Ijo, so it is with Ibo, so it is with Ugoni, Anam, Efi, Urobo. Everybody knows their lands. And the Nigeria we're talking about is the aggregation of all these lands. The fact that the National Assembly is now setting out to go and write a new constitution is an admission of the truth that the old constitution is dead. And what that means is that right now, the business to discuss is whether the constituent components of the defunct federation of Nigeria, because the union anchored on that constitution is out of the way. But there are still the Yoruba, there are still the Ijo, there are still the Ibo, there are still the Ogoni clustered around here. There are still people in Abuja sharing uh, 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 beer and uh, wine in the name of governing Nigeria <laughs> and presiding over Nigeria and legislating for Nigeria. All that can be going on. But the serious business that has turned up to be done now, very urgently too, is to settle the question, the two questions Bola Ige raised a long time ago. Do we still want to federate that's the peoples of Nigeria, not anybody else? And if yes, on what terms? Those are the two things that have to be settled before any other business. If those two things are not being done, I can assure you that the, 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 the collapse, the death, the demise of the 1999 Constitution means that the union anchored on it is no more. And therefore, the sovereignties confiscated and conscripted into that Nigerian Union are now free to be taken by those who can organize themselves. Their sovereignty is inalienable. Their right to determine for themselves how they live in their space is inalienable. Combine the two and just oppose with your dead instrument. The, 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 the union, uh, the agreement to unionize is what we call the constitution. And we knew what we agreed upon. We agreed to be a federation. And we are no longer a federation. We agreed to be a secular state. We are no longer a secular state. Because some people imposed Sharia. Because some people, you know, fractured that federation into what it has become, a unitary state. The other day we saw go on going about talking about how things, how beautiful uh, things have become. But he's not looking at what is happening on the plateau. That people are being slaughtered in the manner they are being slaughtered. Why is this so? He was part of how he was, he was at the center of, he was the one that fractured the four regions on the 27th of May in, in, in 1967. It was on that day by decree number 14 of 1966, that Lieutenant Colonel Yakubu Gowan, who is still loafing around, playing for Nigeria that is a criminal enterprise, playing for Nigeria that feeds on the blood of its, of its own citizens, that it shall be well with Nigeria. That's what he's doing, you know, 50, 60 years after the, 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 the evil they created in place of the Nigeria that should have worked for everybody. And so, the issue is, we are no longer a federation because somebody divided the four regions of the time into 12 states, took all their economic assets, all their assets and powers, handed over to an omni, that there's some kind of a, a fraud, a, an illicit federal government, because you can't have a federal government without a federation. We don't have a federation anymore. We have a country, quite all right. It is that country that is the unitary, uh, that has become the monster that is killing people in the middle bed, confiscating people's assets in, in Lagos and Port Harcourt, making life impossible for the ones in Aba and Onitsha. Because without electricity, where do you go? Without road. I saw some people rejoicing about a, a geometric and then a, some, some, some loafers again come from, from, from somewhere to say, oh, uh, Southeast uh, uh, Development uh, Commission. What kind of lunatics are we talking about like this? The same, the same madmen who did not find the presence of mind to implement the, 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 
reconstruction and rehabilitation and, 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 and reconciliation of 1970 are now going to develop the dotting circle they created east of the Niger, the one they call Southeast. It takes being mad, it takes being out of your sense to think that the, you, you use this constitution to confiscate the sovereignty and the assets of people. Then you sit in Abuja and set up Southeast Economic, uh, uh, whatever, Southeast Development Commission. Has Niger Delta become El Dorado since you created Niger Delta Development Commission? That the East should now begin to rejoice. And characters like uh, Enyin Nabaribe and uh, his uh, co travelers uh, from that part were thinking that that was the better thing to do. We insist that our sovereignty cannot be subjugated to anything that does not take off from our own consent. Whatever it will take, that monster that is sitting on our sovereignty and trying to come to build our road for us, build electricity for us, build our schools for us, as if we have gone lame, as if we are no longer able to think, we can't elect who govern ourselves. You set up INEC, 68 attempts, everything that has gone wrong with Nigeria flow from this instrument of debt. Those 68 chains are the reasons Nigeria are the way they, is the way it is now, and nothing is going to change. Whether you think of economy or security, nothing, absolutely nothing, is going to change. The only thing that is guaranteed, for every day we keep this instrument, the only thing that is guaranteed is that the union will go up in smoke. And I tell you, whatever it will take to bring down that stupid union, defined by this constitution, is what those who understand who want life in place of death that Nigeria is dispensing, those who want freedom in place of the bondage that they've been locked into by a bunch of determined criminals who have now captured the state at the same time that Fulani is flowing into this place to try to take it for themselves. Let us, let us, let us get sensible for once. Let us listen now while we can. If anybody is stupid enough to think that this constitution will be basis of union for any length of time going into the future from now, I'm sorry for that person. Very sorry for that person. National Assembly, you are committing treason against the rest of us. You were sent to go to make laws under the constitution that we have made. We have not made any constitution. That's our contention across the last 24 years. The proof is there in the document. So if you choose to stand with the enemy, to say, on this constitution you stand forever, you are pitching yourself on a head-on collision with the people you claim to represent. And God save you the day they are, going to, they are going to wake up to that realization that you are the one behind their torment. Not anybody from afar. Because it is because you all gather in Abuja, validating this instrument, swearing to defend and uphold it, including the ones that uh, are their local uh, agents uh, across the state, the governors and the senators and the house members, all of you are together. Anybody who can swear to defend and uphold this constitution is the very enemy the people are looking for at this time. They are hungry now. They are breaking into warehouses. They are going to have, they will go beyond those warehouses if you don't come down from your high horse for us to go and find a meaningful solution to this problem. Ninas has placed a comprehensive plan a, a, you know, a well thought out process involving the peoples of Nigeria across these 24 years that have been taken to the international circuit for stakeholders to, to get to know. The only people who are not paying attention are the ones who sit in Abuja pointing guns at everybody else. The National Assembly hear it and hear it very clearly. No, no, no nothing built on this constitution will, will, will stand, no matter what you do. And if it is that, if it is, if it is the stupidity that Ori Sabokaba sold to you in December of 2023 20, 20, 20, that you are relying on, then the mediocrity, the mediocrity that govern your affairs in Abuja has come to life. That you do not know that it is not in your place to make constitution. And you forgot that as recent as 2021, 20, 22, there was an attempt to amend constitution and the Ninas challenged it. Ninas was able to countermand it by telling the states not to discuss resolution about uh, what do they call it, uh, uh, concurrence. And the National Assembly announced that the amendment has failed and that the National Assembly, in any event, 
does not have the powers to make constitution. That people who are demanding a new constitutional arrangement. It's not about going to write another constitution. It's about first dismantling what is not working. Second, getting the owners of this, identify the people who federate. They are the ones who have to agree among themselves. They have to renegotiate. Our union has failed. They have to renegotiate it. There's no other way to go. The only other thing that can happen if no meeting is called soon enough is that unilateral actions are going to follow. People are good. Nobody's going to submit himself to be killed to the last in the manner that Nigeria is uh, coming upon them. You, 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 you remove everything that can make a people survive. You share their blood right in their presence and you tell them that it had to remain so. Even when they have remained peaceful in their pain, working out how to resolve it, you know, uh, uh, non-violently. You are, you, are, you, are, you are calling, you are, you, are, you are sucking their blood. You are inviting them to, to, to rescue themselves from you. That's what you are doing. And so, let nobody be in any doubt of any nature. I speak on behalf of the vanguard group for how these things can be done peacefully. We have the body of knowledge for how it can be done. We have the framework that has been connected with the various owners of the territories you call Nigeria. If you think you have become stronger than all of us and you have become the owner of our sovereignties, we leave you to your devices. We stop here.